Hi, I'm Shelly Lovett with ChildCareLand.com. Today I want to share with you a row and count activity. This mat has five rows of seven on there, so it's a total of 35 squares on here. And you can use whatever you want to use as counters. And I will share with you my top three picks that we like to use with this activity. To play this game, children simply roll the dice. And whatever number shows up on the dice, then they would put the same number of counters in the square until the whole mat is filled up. For an extra challenge, you can also do a roll and remove activity. So again, they would roll the dice, whatever is on the dice, they would remove from the mat until the whole mat is empty. For super young children, you don't even need to use a dice. They can just, you know, put the counters on here themselves. This is really a great activity for math skills as well as fine motor skills development. And I'll share with you our top three choices that we love to use with this mat. The first way we use our roll and count mat is with Play-Doh. And you can pre-make the Play-Doh balls ahead of time. The children can just make a variety of balls. They can pinch the Play-Doh together to form a ball shape, or they can roll it in between their hands to make a ball shape as well, whatever they chose to choose to do. And again, you can do these ahead of doing the dice activity or just during the game itself. It's up to you how you want to do that on there. And so um, one of the things we try to do is not have uh, two colors right next to each other on there. That's just kind of like an extra little challenge for the children. Younger children, you don't need to worry about that um, yet. And then also for very young children, you don't even need to use a dice. The children can just make the balls and put them on there as well. So it's totally up to you how you want to do this activity. A second manipulative that we like to use with our roll and count mats are unifix or math link cubes. These are simply cubes that just link together. They'll have like a little lip on them and you can put them in any of the, the spots on here. But for this purpose, what we do is we build um, five links of seven different colors on here to have that ready for when we actually start to roll the dice. And so when the children roll the dice, they just simply pull off a cube and then set it in a spot. So they get to make these cubes they get to take them apart, and then if you do the reverse where you count down after you filled up your mat and roll the dice, then they can build their cube again by taking these off the mat and then making uh, five groups of seven on here. Really excellent manipulative, one of our favorites. Pom-poms are our third way that we use this mat. And for my pom-poms, I always attach self-adhesive magnets on the bottom so they stay in place better. You don't have to use a magnetic board on the bottom or on for the mat for these to work. You just set them, the weight of them holds them down pretty good. And they're more difficult to bump and move around for the children. So I always add those on and I get these at Walmart. They're in a bag of 18 for $1.99. Um, I do feel that they're worth the investment. We use these for a lot of different uh, projects, these self adhesive magnets. And we, for this activity, we use our tweezers. And so we pick up our pom poms that way and then we set them down in individual spaces on here after we roll the dice. You can find the link for my roll and count pattern below in the description box or at childcareland.com. If you like the materials and the ideas that I present in these videos, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. For a roll and count activity, along with my top three choices for counters, I'm Shelly Levette with ChildCareLand.com. And thanks for watching.